Hello friends and welcome back to Booked and Rooted. Today I'm coming to you with my top plants that I suggest for beginners and the top plants that I would suggest that beginners stay away from. Um, plants that I wish I probably would have stayed away from myself. However, I am still buying them, still trying to keep them alive, still going through the struggle, still stressing myself out about them. But I want to make it so that you, the beginner, won't have the same problem. Now, this is plant tube. There's probably many people in here who know much more about plants than I do. However, I'm going over the plants that work for me, that I think are good for, for beginners, and the plants that I think are not good for beginners. So, without further ado, if you are interested and you want to know, you know, what plants to add to your collection if you're starting out, keep watching. So the very first plant, and this is a no-brainer, this is the plant that I always recommend to people, and that is the snake plant. This is a very versatile plant. There are many different varieties of this plant. You don't have to stick with just a basic plant, you know, snake plant that you always see. There's so many different types that you can get, different styles, different colors, different, you know, pretty much all kinds of different things. Um, the only thing I have not seen to this point is like a variegated, like a truly variegated snake plant, like a snake plant that's like white. Because, you know, they come up with all these variegations all over the place, but I have not seen that yet. But, um, yeah, well, you never know. It probably will be out at some point in our lifetime. The next plant is the pothos. This, um, there's a, also a wide variety of pothos. Golden pothos is usually the plant that a lot of people um, will probably start out with or probably get recommended to because they're easy to find. You can go to almost any um, nursery or big box store and find a golden pothos. They're inexpensive and they are also easy to care for. You can kind of, they're low maintenance, they don't need to be watered all the time, they don't need a ton of sun. It's pretty easy to take care of them. As long as you don't overwater them, you know, they can very, flourish very well for a beginner. The next plant is a ZZ plant. ZZ plant, I like to say ZZ easy, because ZZ plants are easy as well. Um, ZZ plants, to me, they just want to be left alone. You know, you, you get them in their pot, you get them in their home, you water them maybe like once a month, and leave them alone. They don't like to be moved around. They're really, really easy. Um, there are plants that you can slightly neglect, but you still want to make sure you're keeping an eye on them and watering them, you know, appropriately. They have tubulars, which look like potatoes. And these um, things, they hold water. So that's why they don't need water a lot. So I water my ZZ plants probably like once a month. Um, but otherwise, they're super easy to care for. Uh, they are easy to find as well. Now, there's different varieties. There's like three different varieties. Uh, I think there is a variegated variety, but that's going to be really hard to come by. So there's the regular ZZ plant. Um, then there's the ZZ Zinzi, and then there's the ZZ Raven, which is the um, black um, ZZ plant. And that one is a little hard to come by, but they are starting to be in the big box stores due to the tropical um, trends collection that Costa Farms has created and brought to us. The next plant I would say is the Birds of Paradise. Um, I've learned that Birds of Paradise, they are pretty similar to a lot of other of the plants that I'm mentioning. You kind of put them in the spot, water them once a week or once every two weeks and leave them alone. Like just don't bother them. Don't overwater them. Don't move them around. Um, I personally have not had any issues with mine. Here comes the FedEx guy. Why does truck make it so much noise? Bro. Oh. So now of course my dogs are going to bark. So I'm going to wait. Chico, you bark it before he even gets out of the truck. You need to stop. You are so extra. I'm 
don't even know if he came here for us. I think he might have turned around, sat in our driveway, and looked at something on his phone or something. Anyway, back to what I was trying to do, for I was so rudely interrupted. Next is the dumb cane. Um, this plant is also pretty easy to take care of. I haven't had any issues with it. Um, you, you know, you just have to kind of watch it for yellowing leaves because it can yellow. And you also don't want to overwater these as well because these are also plants that kind of hold water. So, um, you know, I probably water mine maybe like once a month, three weeks to a month, something like that. But they are also easy to take care of. They're also easy to find as well. And they're pretty, fairly inexpensive. They are large, so if you don't have space for a large plant, um, you know, this might be one you want to stay away from. Um, and as far as sun requirements, I don't think, I don't keep mine in front of the window. Mine is probably about um, 10 to 12 feet away from my west facing window and it's doing fine. Next plant is the Chinese Evergreen. I have three different varieties of the Chinese Evergreen. Um, I think I have the Dalmatian and then I have two other ones that are, no, actually I have four, five. Okay, so anyway, I have several different varieties of the Chinese Evergreen. Um, they're pretty low maintenance. Now, I did have a little bit of trouble with one that I got recently, and I switched it over to Lekka, and it seems to be doing very well. I will say I have two Chinese Evergreens that are in Lekka, and they are flourishing. I think that they may like that system. However, the ones I have in, um, in soil are okay as well. So... Um, I think they're pretty low maintenance. They're also easy to find and also um, pretty inexpensive. If you want something that has a little more variety, maybe more color, things like that, you can go with a Chinese Evergreen because they have different varieties, different colors, um, and they're fairly easy to take care of. It may be something you may want to like graduate to after, after you start, you know, in your collection, start buying, you know, maybe get you a snake plant of pothos and then maybe graduate to a Chinese evergreen at some point when you feel a little more confident. And then we have the plants that I uh, warn you to stay away from. Just because, you know, you do what you do at your own risk. Um, and then some people have great luck with these plants the first time around. So, you know, I'm just going by my experience and I'm sharing my experience. But the plants that I would suggest that beginners do not spend their money on, not right off the bat, um, not until you get a little more used to having plants, used to a routine, and do some research before you even think about buying these plants. And they are Calatheus alocasias. I keep all of mine together in this one little area because these plants, they are similar in their testiness. Like they like, you know, humidity and um, as far as watering, they like the same, kind of the same amount of moisture, things like that. So I just figure I would keep them together and kind of see how well that works for me. This is my second try with a lot of the, these Calatheas. Um, some of them I've never had before, but most of these I have had before. And this is my second try. So I'm just going to try things a little bit different and see how well it works for me. But again, I don't suggest these plants for someone who is just starting off because they are very, like, temperamental. Um, but, you know, this is the thing. It's good to know that, to go into buying those plants, being mindful of that. And then you know what to do. You Either you want to take the chance and buy them and see how well it works out for you. Or you want to avoid them for the time being. Uh, next is the fiddle leaf fig or any type of ficus genus, to be honest. Those are all, they can be tough as well. Now, I do have the fiddle leaf fig. I also have um, a rubber tree. I have two different varieties of the rubber tree. I have the burgundy and the ruby. And I also have a teneki on the way. I love this genus. I love these plants. And I will never give up on trying to keep them alive. I don't care. I will buy them. I will try, keep trying and trying and trying. I will say, first time I ever bought a rubber tree, it was horrible. It did horrible. I had maybe like two or three that did horrible. I think at this point, I've got to the point where I kind of know how they are. They like a little bit of humidity. They don't like to be over water. They do like sun. I've noticed that taking them out of a sunny spot um, is not 
a good idea. They like to be in the sun. They do also do not like to be moved. When you find a spot for them, you need to try to keep them in that spot as much as you can. Um, and that's all. That's actually with all the ficus genus. I don't know what it is about moving them around, but that really does something to them. I don't know. They just have a fit when you do that. So that's why I say this is probably not a good plant for a beginner, just because it's just there's just too many quirks. You have to kind of figure it out. You have to fill this plant out. Um, but again, this is something that you can take this information and go into it mindfully. So just in case you're like, I'm getting this plant anyway, I don't care. Well, then you know what you might deal with. Next is the Monstera. Um, and I say the Monstera because I've had my trial and error with the Monstera. And like I said, this is from my experience. I'm not an expert, but I'm just saying from my experience. Um, what I've learned about the Monstera is that they don't like to be repotted. So when I get my Monstera, the most recent one that I got, I'm leaving it alone. I'm not repotting it until I really, really feel like I have to do it. Every time I've bought a Monstera, the first thing I did as soon as I brought it home, I repotted it, you know, and then I ran into a situation at one point where the pot was too big and then I had to repot it again and just that plant is gone by the way it's completely gone no more it's just it didn't make it so that plant you know monsteras they can be easy I know a lot of people who have had success even though they are beginners so they can be easy plants but those plants you know monsteras do like some sun uh, people say that they are tolerant you know to not having a lot of sun but I don't believe that I really do think that they need to be they need to get a fairly decent amount of sun. They need to be fairly close to some type of sun source. Uh, whether it be artificial lighting or, you know, actual, actual natural sun. And I've noticed that I've had, I've moved mine to different areas in the house where they were not getting a lot of sun and they started to deteriorate. So I feel like they like to have a lot of sun. I also think that they like to be in terracotta as far as the pot is concerned. Um, because they do, they are drought resistant, I mean not drought resistant, but they are tolerable to drought. They're forgiving to being dried out. I think they actually like being dried out. I've noticed that I have had success with letting mine like almost completely dry out and then watering it. So um, that's another thing about Monsteras. So just, again, all this is just so you guys are mindful if you want to start, you know, buying plants. I just want you guys to be mindful of what you're doing, what you're getting yourself into, just giving you these little tips and tricks and little warnings. Um, so yeah, that's why I'm coming in with this video because it's very important that you think about these things before you invest your money in plants because they're, you know, it can be an expensive habit. Um, also, I've had a lot of people ask me what question, I mean, you know, what plants I suggest for someone that's just starting off. And I'm typically like, you know, kind of rushing and answering the question. I just answer it with a snake plant or a pothos. So I figured I would come in and do this video just so you guys can get this information. And I will refer anyone that asks me that question from here on out to this video. Not for the views, but just because, you know, this is a more extensive answer to that question. You know what I mean? So, last plant is the peace lily. Peace lily, um... Peace Lily was actually one of my first plants along with the snake plant and the pothos. Um, the thing about the Peace Lilies is they, they kind of do let you know when they need watering at least. But it's just, I don't know, they're, they're really, I've had a lot of issues with Peace Lilies. There's like this disease that they get as well. I don't know what it's called. And it can just mark, make them start turning yellow. It's something that gets in the roots. And it's like, it doesn't matter what you do. It's just not going to, you know, it's just going to die. And I swore them off for a while because of that. Because the last one I had, um, had got this disease, whatever it was. I'll try to see if I can find out what it is. And I'll put that down in the description box. But um, it's just something you want to be aware of. I don't think it can get onto your other plants. It's just a peace lily disease. Um, but if it, once it gets that disease, there's almost no bouncing back for it. It's just kind of like slowly gradually just keeps turning yellow and just dying off um but and then the leaves get really limp and they don't have any like no matter how much you water it it won't matter it's just going to droop and stay droopy that's how you that's kind of an indication of that something else is wrong with it 
Um, but yeah, the Peace Lily is just really, I don't know, it's really temperamental. Um, I've never been able to get mine to bloom again. Like once I, you know, first initially buy it, usually it has the blooms. Those blooms die off. I have never had one bloom again. Um, not to say that any, that's any fault of the plant itself. It's just, you know, something I just have not been able to ha make happen. People do it all the time. You know, people are really good with peace lilies. Some people are excellent with peace lilies. But those are just one plant that I struggle with. And I just say that, you know, for someone that's starting off, that may not be a plant you want to deal with because it can be a little stressful. And um, there's kind of no rhyme or reason why it does some of the things that it does. Like, doesn't grow, doesn't bloom. You know, it's, aside from the disease that it gets, it's almost like... Um, they're very dramatic, like I said, when any water in a droop, which is nice because that's an indication that it needs water, so it's helpful for someone that's beginning. But at the same time, um, it's also kind of scary if you don't know that. But another thing, um, I feel like they need sun. They need a decent amount of sun as well. I don't think you can put a piece lily over in a corner somewhere and expect it to flourish. It's not going to flourish. They need to have a decent amount of sun, at least be somewhat close to whatever type of window source you have. Um, as far as artificial lighting, I don't know. I really wouldn't suggest that, but I have seen people have them like in the office at work. People will have peace lilies and they do okay, but um, I don't know. If you want to try to get yours to bloom, I've heard that giving it lots of sun is a good way to get your peace lily to bloom again if you want that. So. So that is it. So those are my top plants that I think are easy and great for beginners and the top plants that I think that beginners should stay away from and the reasons why, etc. So if you have any questions or comments or anything like that, leave that information below in the comments and I will get back with you. Like I said, I am no expert. I'm just going off of the experience that I've had with these plants. Um, and if you guys are trying to you know, start your plant journey and get into having houseplants, um, I say congratulations and good luck to you and have fun with it. Enjoy it. That's why I'm saying, you know, get plants that are easy to take care of so you don't have to be stressed about it because you don't want that experience to be stressful right off the rip and then you're like, I'm never going to buy plants again or I have a black thumb or I, I don't do nothing but kill plants. No, that's not the case. You don't. Um, one of the main killers of plants in most cases is overwatering. So, just make sure your plants actually need watering before you water it. You know, don't just go and say, oh, let me just throw some water in this plant. You know, rule of thumb, two inches down, down to your knuckle. That's a good source to put your finger down in the soil and to fill for moisture. If it feels moist, do not water it. If it feels dry, then you can water it. But I wouldn't gush it with a gallon of water. You know, just give it a little drink. You know, a lot of plants just need a little drink just to keep thriving. And some plants like to be dried out. So you just have to kind of get your plants, get to know them, let them speak to you, let them tell you what they want, and just kind of go from there. Because everyone's environment is different as well. So that's another thing you want to keep in mind. Everyone doesn't have a bunch of sun, or you may have lots of sun. You may have huge windows. You know, everyone's environment is different, so you have to deal with your plants based on the environment that you have, based on the environment that your plants are living in. So that is another tip. So I guess this is like a tips and tricks. I don't know what, I don't know this video is kind of going into a tangent, but that is all as far as the plants that I suggest for beginners and the plants that I suggest, I don't suggest for beginners. And I'm going to end it there and I want to thank you guys for watching. Please comment, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, you know, you know the spill, same thing every time, and until next time, peace.